In this question, a 60-year-old male is hospitalized with arrhythmia. Okay. The agent used to treat this patient's condition is known to significantly prolong QT interval on EKG, but despite this, this, but despite this, drug is associated with low incidence of torsades to pointers. Which of the following agents was most likely used in this patient? So before we talk about arrhythmia, before we talk about torsades, before we talk about QT interval, let's first talk about the different types of uh, cells in the heart. Obviously, there's two types of cells. There's the ventricular cells. And we all know that this is the ventricular depolarization. And then there is the pacemaker cells. And this is the pacemaker, uh, the action potential of the pacemaker. Now, the reason I'm reviewing it is because it's, I'm sure you all know it, but still it's good for review, right? I mean, just a quick brush up gives you momentum when you're dealing with cardiac pharmacology because cardiac pharmacology is very, very physiologically based. First of all, what happens in a ventricular depolarization? There is a couple of phases here. This is phase zero. This is phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. And different things happen in different phases. So in the ventricular cell, the first thing that happens is sodium goes inside the cell. So sodium in. I'm going to pretend like this is the inside of the cell and moving out would be outside, just to make things a little simpler. So at phase zero, we know that sodium goes inside the cell. What happens at phase one? At phase one, this is when the sodium stops moving in and potassium starts moving out. And this is a very, very brief phase where potassium starts moving out. So after that brief phase of potassium moving out, potassium still keep on moving out in phase two. But to balance this, I mean, if the positive charges keep moving out, how is the how is this plateau, right? How is this plateauing? That's because potassium is moving out and calcium is moving in. That's, that's what's happening in phase two. And then we have phase four, uh, sorry, then we have phase three, where the, this is the repolarization phase. Potassium still keeps moving out. This is only potassium. And last of all, we have phase four. Phase four is the resting membrane potential. This is where the potassium balances out because this phase is very permeable, permeable to potassium ions. All right. Okay, so that is our uh, ventricular cell, okay? Now let's talk about our pacemaker cells. Now our pacemaker cells has three phases, really. It doesn't have the plateau phase. It has this flat phase, it's called phase four, followed by phase zero, followed by phase three. So we're gonna start from phase zero again. So at phase zero, Instead of sodium, there is going to be influx of calcium, okay? That's how it's different from the ventricular cells. Pacemakers is going to have infl influx of calcium at phase zero. By the end of phase zero, the calcium becomes inactivated and the potassium channels open up. So at phase three, we are going to have efflux of potassium ion. And at phase four of the pacemaker, this is the slow depolarization phase. This phase deals with also sodium channels, but these sodium channels are not like these sodium channels. These sodium channels are the, the funny sodium channels. These are called the funny channels. So as this phase, becomes slowly depolarized, there is conductance of sodium at phase four. All right, so now that we have an idea about the ventricular cell and the pacemaker cell, let's get back to the question. Now the question talks about a prolonged QT interval. What does that really mean? Now let's talk about an EKG of a cell. Whenever we're talking of a cardiac cell, whenever we're talking about an EKG, we first see the P wave, 
then we see the Q dip, R, S, and then the T. Right? And whenever they say Q, T interval, they mean all the way from here to all the way here. That would be our Q, T interval. And in this question, they're saying that our QT interval is prolonged. Okay, QT interval is prolonged. Again, before we talk about QT, let's talk about what's happening here. So the P wave is really atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization that's our P wave. Don't be confused that P wave is atrial contraction. Atrial is depolarizing and then you see this little uh, dash here. This is when the atria is contracting. This is when the atria is depolarizing. Again, QRS is ventricular, ventricular depolarization. Again, this is not when the ventricles are contracting. They're depolarizing. This is where ventricle is contracting. Last of all, we have the T wave. And the T wave is ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization. Again, I know you know it but I just wanted to talk about it before we move on doing all sorts of questions. Now, QT interval, really, I mean, you can see that the QT interval pretty much starts with ventricular depolarization, followed by ventricular contraction, and then ventricular repolarization. So pretty much QT deals with ventricle, ventricular function, or they can, some they, um, in um, layman's term, they often say QT interval deals with ventricular contraction. But like I just told you that this is not only contraction, there is depolarization followed by contraction followed by ventricular repolarization. But this happens so fast that QT interval is just signifies ventricular contraction. Okay, so any agent which is going to increase our QT interval is also going to increase the time when the ventricle is going to contract, right? It's going to contract for a longer amount of time. So now we can incorporate this idea to the question. Any agent which is going to increase our QT interval is anything that increases our QT interval makes it prone to have torsad du pointis. We're only going to have torsad du pointis when our QT interval, interval is prolonged. In fact, torsad du pointis is defined as a prolongation or irregular rhythm where QT, uh, irregular rhythm which originates from the ventricle where the QT interval is prolonged, which is initiated by prolonged QT interval. Okay, let me rephrase that. Prolonged QT interval gives rise to an irregular rhythm which originates from the ventricle called torsa de pointis. Okay? So it's not a good thing to have. You should not have rhythm originating from the ventricles. You should have rhythm coming from the atria, from the ACE and the AV node. Okay, so in this particular patient, they're saying that the QT interval is prolonged. Okay? Think about the now the QT interval deals with ventricle. Now let's go back to our this diagram. This is our ventricular depolarization. Which part do you think has the biggest um, effect on the prolongation of QT interval? Would not be the plateau phase. If we can increase the plateau phase like that, don't you think it's going to increase our QT interval? Absolutely. And we do do that. We use it by using class 
three drugs, which are the sodium channel blockers. If we block sodium channels, they're going to exit or they're going to efflux slower, which is going to prolong our plateau phase, which is going to increase our QT interval. Another drug or another class of drugs, which is also going to increase QT interval, is going to be class 1A. Class 1A drug increases QT interval by increasing action potential uh, and increasing effective refractory period. That's another long discussion, so I'm not going to expand on that. But we know that increase in QT interval is achieved by class 3 drugs, class 3 antiarrhythmics and class 1A. All right, now they're asking, now that we understand which are the two drugs which causes increased QT interval, we can jump to the question. Okay, which of the following agents was most likely used in this patient? What was the question again? The agent used to treat this patient's condition is known to significantly prolong QT interval on EKG, but despite this drug is associated with a low incidence of torsades. So they're asking this particular drug increases QT interval, but it doesn't really increase torsades. What is that drug? It either is going to be class one, class class three or class one, right? Either one of them, class one A or class three. So let's see, look at the let's look at the options. Choice A is class three. So that is one of our option. Choice B is a beta blocker. So that's out. Lidocaine is class one B, so that is also out. Procainamide D is class 1A, so that's in. Verapamil is class 4, so that is out. Adenosine is no class. <laughs> it has no class. Uh, so that's out, and digoxin is also not an antiarrhythmic in that sense. So that is also out. So we're left with A or D. So we really have to know which one causes increased QT interval but doesn't cause torsades, that is actually amiodarone. Hey, A for amiodarone, choice A, that's the answer. It's that part of the question is really memory, but the rest we do have to understand and we do have to know.